Still late, but still games of decades past. Let me clarify one important thing before I go on and talk about the game for September of 2003. Games of Decades Past is not a review. It's only serve as my self-reflection of a game that came out a decade ago, and I give a really general, not very specific or analytic perspective on uh, what I think about it, basically. So, if you want a review about it, maybe down the line, maybe if enough people recommend me to review a game, I will do it, but those are really, like, short and to the point um, opinions of a game that came out. Um, for example, one of the games I really wanted to talk about on September that came out a decade ago was Billy Hatcher and the Giant Egg. But this is a game that I would really like to go back to and review again because uh, back when it originally came out, I didn't like it so much, but I think now I'm probably going to like it a little bit more. So that's definitely something I'm going to review down the line, so that's why I'm not doing it uh, on September. What I am going to do is this game, Simpsons Hit and Run. Not a lot of games really came out on September of 2003. There's a lot of mediocre ones, but um, Simpsons Hit and Run is probably one of the better ones, if not the best game that came out during September. That being said, it's not the best game of 2003. I actually think it's one of the games that aged more um, than all of the games I've pretty much talked about so far in Games of Decades Past. Um, it's pretty much Grand Theft Auto Simpsons, but uh, it still has like its own like you know unique twist that I really like um, compared to like other Grand Theft Auto clones. I really like the idea that you can also explore both Springfield on foot and on a vehicle which is really nice. I like the jumping controls is really fluid and you can find all those different coins and little like secrets uh, hidden all over Springfield which is really big and fun to explore and the driving physics are also really fun in a sense that they are not realistic at all. I mean uh, it's even less realistic than Saints Row but then again it's still easy to get into and I really had a lot of fun driving in that game because of uh, the physics and how it's really easy to control how to even do the drifting mechanic which I have hard problems in games even like Grand Theft Auto 5 for example. That being said, uh, the driving is the majority of the game, which I kind of wish there were more on foot missions, but um, I'm not a huge fan of the driving because uh, they have specific mission types, and one of the types I don't like is the racing, because the enemy AI for the racing is really, really annoying. When they run into a, a car, they just blow right through it, whereas if you run into a car, you have you pretty much get stopped, and you have to reverse and then pass the car, which loses a lot of time, which makes the opponent pass you really easily. You get the idea of it, but if you have to do about 20 tries to get it right, I think that's uh, something that's really unfortunate. And also, there are many times during a race when you do a mistake and there's uh, an incoming car, incoming traffic, and it just runs into you, tips you over, and then you spin 180 degrees and you have to realign yourself. That right there ruins an entire race. Now this is not new in racing games, and basically one mistake can make you go from first to six. Many games do that, but with this game, you can barely survive if you make a mistake like that. You may have to you have to make sure you run perfect from beginning to end. And that to me was really frustrating, especially when I was playing the game again, that half of the missions were like that, and I didn't enjoy that. Thankfully, there are also some really fun missions too, that you have to collect items throughout Springfield, like uh, monkeys, for example, which I thought was really fun. You also have to get rid of like um, chasers as well, um, for a limited amount of time, just kind of like escape their... Um, uh, cone of vision, so to say, similar to how Grand Auto 4 and 5 did it too, which um, I really liked, and it's very funny. Obviously, it's The Simpsons, so it has really funny dialogue, great voice acting from the show. You got pretty much Dan Castaneda and company, Hank Azaria doing all the voices, and I'm not a big Simpsons fan, I'm gonna tell you right now. Not because I don't like the show, I'm not gonna tell you. It's not as funny as it used to be. I just never really watched it too much when I was growing up. I was more into South Park, not necessarily because of the gross humor, but to me, the sharper humor of South Park 
um, talk to me more. And then again, in Israel, they aired um, The Simpsons in a channel that I barely watched, so I never really caught it on. Though I do want to go back, you know, and watch some of the older episodes because a lot of them are, of course, really funny, especially the older ones. And I love the movie. So, obviously, they incorporated the humor and the love from those um, shows and movie to the game, and I can tell. And it's definitely probably the funniest of the Simpsons games. I didn't really like, you know, uh, Road Rage all that much. I thought the newer uh, The Simpsons game that they made in 2007 was eh, mediocre. I thought it was kind of a lame beat em up that I personally didn't really like all that much. Um, graphic, though, is okay. It doesn't look really all that impressive. I was actually surprised how dated the animation is and how, even though, like, it looks cartoony, how. The graphics themselves are really like very polygonal, simplistic. Kind of wish it had more of like that cell shaded look that uh, the 2007 game has, which I will say look, that game looks better than Hit and Run. But Hit and Run controls better. Hit and Run at least has a much more depth to it, and it's a longer game. There's a lot of stuff to do in it, which I appreciate it. But still, from all the games I've played so far in games of decades past, it's probably the game that aged the most. I would say um, it doesn't really feel. Um, you know, as solid as open world games have evolved ever since, but I still believe it's the best Simpsons games. I would put it over the arcade game personally, because I enjoyed playing it, even though I really got frustrated with the missions, and I really hate the fact that when I get a game over, I have to go all the way back and do, you know, the mission again from the very beginning, but you know what? That's what you kind of have to do sometimes with games, so I, I dealt with it. It's not something I would rate really high, but if you're a Simpsons fan, this is a treat. And it came around the same time the Futurama game came out, and quite frankly, the Hit and Run blows Futurama out of the water, so if you have a choice, definitely get to Hit and Run instead. So, this is Games of Decades Pass for September, I really hope you enjoyed. This was a little bit of a short one, because not much to say about this game, because I haven't really played it the whole way. But um, I hope you enjoy it, and I have a lot to talk about in October, which is this month. I'm well aware of that, but things are a bit trickier with me right now because I have a full-time job, I have full-time school, so I'm trying my best to release as much video as I can, but um, I will try my best to get uh, the next one, if not in October, at least a few days into November. So thank you for watching, guys, and uh, you know what I'm gonna say by now. Guys, honestly, uh, you know, I don't really have much to show for September, so blah.